Good evening. I want to uh, start by thanking Danielle so much for such an inspiring message on a night when we are gathered to celebrate so many glorious works of journalism, literature, drama, and musical composition. My name is Mike Pride, and I'm the administrator of the Pulitzer Prizes. Before we get to the evening's main event, let us recognize four leaders instrumental in upholding the Pulitzer tradition. I ask them to stand as I call their names, but please hold your applause until all four have been introduced. Seymour Topping, a storied foreign correspondent and New York Times editor, was administrator of the Pulitzer Prizes from 1993 through 2002. Sig Gisler, a superb editor in Milwaukee, became a superb teacher at Columbia University. He oversaw the prizes for 12 years until his retirement in 2014. Michael Sovereign was named the 17th president of Columbia in 1980. He served in that role and as a member of the Pulitzer Prize Board through 1993. George Rupp became the 18th president of Columbia that year and was a valued member of the Pulitzer Board through 2002. Please give these four leaders a big hand. As Top and Sig well know, the single focus of the Pulitzer Prize operation each year is to find and identify the producers of the best journalism, books, drama, and music. We are looking for work that upholds the highest principles and standards of their disciplines. Our chief purpose for gathering tonight is to welcome this year's Pulitzer Prize winners into the fold. In a couple of minutes, as you listen to their names and see them collect their prizes, I think you'll agree that they reflect the genius of America's flourishing diversity. Now, to do the honors, it is my great pleasure to introduce Lee Bollinger, the 19th president of Columbia University. President Bollinger is a valued voice on the Pulitzer Prize board and a wonderful supporter of the Pulitzer office. As a legal scholar, he is also one of the country's most tenacious defenders of the First Amendment. His duties tonight are twofold. First, he will share a few observations on this auspicious occasion. Then, he will then we will turn to the highlight of the evening, the awarding of the 2016 Pulitzer Prizes to the 100th class of winners. Please welcome President Bollinger. <clears throat> How are you? Thank you very much, Mike. 100 years is a long time by any measure. The more successful something is, the more a centennial celebration of it is marked by wonder and curiosity about how this success came about. The Pulitzer Prizes are among the most well-known and respected awards given in today's world of seemingly endless awards. What might be fairly called Pulitzer Prize envy and imitation are rampant as prizes proliferate. What accounts for this success? Three things I think are important. The first is what the prizes signify and reward namely absolute independence of mind, creativity and courage about ideas, all infused with the sense of purpose of advancing human understanding and well-being. But worthy recipients are not enough. The second important element, therefore, is the integrity of the selection process. Let me just say this. I have never been more impressed with any decision-making process 
than I have with the Pulitzer boards and which I have proudly participated for 14 years. The qualities of thought and discussion that characterize these meetings, in my view, match the work ultimately recognized. And this is rare. And the third and last ingredient, in my view, is that the Pulitzer Prize success story is the remarkable accuracy of choosing great works. Not always, to be sure, but astonishingly astute, as you can see by looking back over the century of recipients and, of course, all of tonight's awardees. The century of Pulitzer Prizes corresponds very closely to the century of the development of the jurisprudence of freedom of speech and press under the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The first Supreme Court cases occurred in 1919. More locally, of course, it is the time of the creation of the School of Journalism, our illustrious school. And it is the time of the origins of the famous core curriculum at Columbia University, an institution brilliantly created something unique in the academic world by insisting on the close engagement with actual texts in the context of small groups, led ideally by non-experts, with a mental eye towards better understanding modern civilization's deepest puzzles. It is therefore right that the home of the Pulitzer Prizes is here at Columbia University and that it yearly reinforces and gives life to the highest aspirations of the principle of freedom of speech and press and the schools and the core curriculum, all the centennial partners in this evening. Let's now turn to the night's awards. Public service. For a distinguished example of meritorious public service by a newspaper or news site through the use of its journalistic resources, including the use of stories, editorials, cartoons, photographs, graphics, videos, databases, multimedia or interactive presentations or other visual material, the Associated Press for an investigation of severe labor abuses tied to the supply of seafood to American supermarkets and restaurants, reporting that freed 2,000 slaves, brought perpetrators to justice, and inspired reforms. Congratulations to the Associated Press. The Citation for Breaking News Reporting. For a distinguished example of local reporting of breaking news that, as quickly as possible, captures events accurately as they occur and as time passes, illuminates, provides context, and expands upon the initial coverage. Winner is the Los Angeles Times staff for exceptional reporting including both local and global perspectives on the shooting in San Bernardino and the terror investigation that followed. Congratulations, Los Angeles Times.
is gonna be. Thank you. Investigative reporting. For a distinguished example of investigative reporting using any available journalistic tool, Leonoro, Lapeter, Anton, and Anthony Cormier of the Tampa Bay Times, and Michael Braga of the Sarasota Herald Tribune for a stellar example of collaborative reporting by two news organizations that revealed escalating violence and neglect in Florida's mental hospitals and laid the blame at the door of state officials. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Explanatory reporting. For a distinguished example of explanatory reporting that illuminates a significant and complex subject, demonstrating mastery of the subject, lucid writing, and clear presentation using any available journalistic tool, the winner is T. Christian Miller of ProPublica and Ken Armstrong of The Marshall Project for the startling examination and expose of law enforcement's enduring failures to investigate reports of rape properly and to comprehend the traumatic effects on its victims. Congratulations to Christian Miller. Local reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on significant issues of local concern, demonstrating originality and community expertise using any available journalistic tool, the winner is Michael LaForgia, Kara Fitzpatrick, and Lisa Gardner of the Tampa Bay Times for exposing a local school board's culpability in turning some county schools into failure factories with tragic consequences for the community. Congratulations to you. The prize for national reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on national affairs using any available journalistic tool, the winner is the, Nash of the Washington Post staff 
for its revelatory initiative in creating and using a national database to illustrate how often and why the police shoot to kill and who the victims are most likely to be. Congratulations to the Washington Post. The Prize for International Reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on international affairs using any available journalistic tool, the winner is Alyssa J. Rubin of the New York Times for thoroughly for thoroughly reported and movingly written accounts giving voice to Afghan women who were forced to endure unspeakable cruelties. Congratulations. The prize for feature writing. For distinguished feature writing, giving prime consideration to quality of writing, originality, and concision using any available journalistic tool. The winner is Katherine Schultz of The New Yorker for an elegant scientific narrative of the rupturing of the Cascadia fault line, a masterwork of environmental reporting and writing. Congratulations, Katherine Schultz. It's an unbelievable thing. It's really something. Congratulations. The prize for distinguished commentary. For distinguished commentary using any available journalistic tool, the winner is Farah Stockman of the Boston Globe for extensively reported columns that probe the legacy of busing in Boston and its effects on education in the city with a clear eye on ongoing racial contradictions. Congratulations, Farrah Stockman. Congratulations, Prize for Distinguished Criticism. For Distinguished Criticism, using any available journalistic tool, the winner is Emily Nussbaum of The New Yorker for television reviews written with an affection that never blunts the shrewdness of her analysis or the easy authority of her writing. Congratulations, Emily Nussbaum. Congratulations. Prize for Editorial Writing. For distinguished editorial writing, the test of excellence being clearness of style, moral purpose, sound reasoning, and the power to influence public opinion in what the writer conceives to be the right direction using any available journalistic tool. The winners are 
John Hackworth and Brian Gleason of Sun Newspapers, Charlotte Harbor, Florida, for fierce, indignant editorials that demanded truth and change after the deadly assault of an inmate by correction officers. Congratulations. To you. The prize for editorial cartooning. For a distinguished cartoon or portfolio of cartoons characterized by originality, editorial effectiveness, quality of drawing and pictorial effect, published as a still drawing animation or both, the winner is Jack Oman of the Sacramento Bee for cartoons that convey for cartoons that convey wry, rueful perspectives through sophisticated style that combines bold line work with subtle colors and textures. Congratulations, Jack Oman. Congratulations. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> That's going to be great. Well, you deserve it. Breaking news photography. For a distinguished example of breaking news photography in black and white or color, which may consist of a photograph or photographs, Mars Marusio Lima, Sergio Promoverov, Tyler Hicks, and Daniel Eder of the New York Times for photographs that captured the resolve of refugees, the perils of their journeys, and the struggle of host countries to take them in. Congratulations. Also for breaking news photography, for a distinguished example of breaking news photography in black and white or color, which may consist of a photograph or photographs, the photography staff of Reuters for gripping photographs, each with its own voice, that follow migrant refugees hundreds of miles across uncertain boundaries to unknown destinations. Congratulations, Reuters. The prize for feature photography, for a distinguished example of feature photography in black or white uh, or color, which may consist of a photograph or photographs. The winner is Jessica Rinaldi of the Boston Globe for the raw. <laughs> for
for the raw and revealing photographic story of a boy who strives to find his footing after abuse by those he trusted. Congratulations. Congratulations. The Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. For distinguished fiction by an American author, preferably dealing with American life, The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen, a layered immigrant tale told in the wry confessional voice of a man of two minds and two countries, Vietnam and the United States. Congratulations. The Pulitzer Prize in Drama for a distinguished play by an American author preferably original in its source and dealing with American life. Hamilton, book, music, and lyrics by Lin-Manuel Miranda, a landmark American musical about the gifted and self-destructed founding father whose story becomes both contemporary and irresistible. Congratulations, Lin-Manuel Miranda. You are very agile. I watched you on Saturday night live. You know you got it. Fantastic. <laughs> Pulitzer Prize in History for a distinguished and appropriately documented book on the history of the United States. Winner is Custer's Trials, A Life on the Frontier of a New America by T.J. Stiles, a rich and surprising new telling of the journey of the iconic American soldier whose death turns out not to have been the main point of his life. Congratulations, T.J. Stiles. Pulitzer Prize in Biography for a distinguished and appropriately documented biography or autobiography by an American author. Barbarian Days, A Surfing Life by William Finnegan, a finely crafted memoir of a youthful obsession that has propelled the author through a distinguished writing career. Congratulations, William Finnegan. The Pulitzer Prize in Poetry for a distinguished volume of original verse by an American author, Ozone Journal by Peter Balikian. Poems that bear witness to the old losses and tragedies that undergird a global age of danger and uncertainty. Congratulations, Peter Balikian.
Pulitzer Prize for General Nonfiction for a distinguished and appropriately documented book of nonfiction by an American author that is not eligible for consideration in any other category. These are the result of endless discussions on how to, <laughs> to frame this. The winner is Black Flag, Black Flag, The Rise of ISIS by Joby Warwick, a deeply reported book of remarkable clarity showing how the flawed rationale for the Iraq War led to the explosive growth of the Islamic State. Congratulations, Joby Warwick. and last, the Pulitzer Prize in Music. For a distinguished musical composition by an American that has had its first performance or recording in the United States during that year. In for a Penny, In for a Pound by Henry Threadgill, a highly original work in which notated music and improvisation mesh in a sonic tapestry that seems the very expression of modern American life. Congratulations, Henry Fredrick. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This concludes our celebration tonight, but we have two important requests. <clears throat> First, we'd like this year's winners to return to this stage immediately for the annual class picture. At the same time, we'd like all current and former Pulitzer Prize board members to gather in the trustees room for a group picture. The room is on your left. As you go through that door, there'll be people to help you to it. Um, and this is the room where the, pardon? Right here in front, okay. <clears throat> um, the board members, you can do them here too? Yeah, yeah, and the other, right, gotcha, okay. So I was just gonna say that that room is where the first Pulitzer Prizes were confirmed in, in 1917, uh, the room that we're taking that picture in. I wanna thank you all very much for coming and good night.